Hey there, disco guys. Welcome back to therapy. Sit down, grab a chair, get comfortable. It's time for part two. So the previous video was um, very interesting in the sense that I didn't really expect it would get so much uh, responses and so many questions and comments and requests to elaborate on certain things. So that is exactly what I'm going to do today in this video. Uh, before I do that, I do want to quickly um, specify a few things about the previous video that I think many people kind of misunderstood. Uh, specifically about my comments on the developer's post regarding the new update. I told you that I think that the developers saying that they are going to start fixing the issues with the roleplay environment is very silly because, as I already explained later on, the change of our attitude towards the Discovery Freelancer roleplay environment is on a individual player level, depending on the ideas and assumptions new players, as they come in, get taught over time. So this is a change that has been happening over the course of many years, and saying that you are just going to fix it just like that is silly, or as I said in that video, fucking retarded. Now, I'm not blaming them of incompetence, though, to be completely fair, at the time recording that video, I wasn't aware of that zoner bop drama yet, so... Yeah, moving on. So, uh, today I'm going to be elaborating a little bit on that one specific topic that I mentioned before, one of my pet peeves, and that is the idea that we here in Discovery Freelancer take uh, tend to take our characters, uh, take our IDs, and then completely disregard the roleplay environment for the sake of our own fulfillment. And nothing is better uh, shown in this regard than the things we tend to do when it comes to official factions, especially when it comes to military factions. And today, um, I'm going to be focusing on one particular story from 2015-2016, and one of the reasons why I'm going to be focusing on that particular encounter is because not only I was there personally, but also, it probably involves people who are not a part of Disco anymore, so you can't really, you know, witch hunt them down these days. So basically what happened is that I was doing one of my closed economy characters, and it was a freelancer ID shuttle, very low rank, obviously, in Liberty, and it was a completely civilian character in massive finger quotes, because, you know, who the fuck is a civilian in Disco? And um, the situation was like this. I encountered a Liberty Rogue on the lanes in Pennsylvania. So, I, I was completely ignored for some reason. I don't know why, I don't remember the context. But basically, I made my way to New York and then to Planet Manhattan. As I got to Manhattan, there were three players there. There was a Indy LNS uh, battleship, and there were two tagged Liberty Navy players, both flying um, fighters. So, being the good uh, Libertonian character that my character was, um, I, or rather my character, opened up a transmission, local transmission obviously, uh, to the uh, captain of this huge ship and started giving my report. And uh, as the two Liberty Navy guys, uh, the official Liberty Navy guys, started to ask questions, um, my character simply chose to completely ignore him, because these were two random fighter pilots budging in in a discussion between what is a superior rank to them in terms of the ship captain and a civilian bound by duty to report to his superiors. And the problem is, at some point in time, um, it, was, it became such a problem that they straight up said, like, why are you not you should be talking to us. Like, why, why are you talking to this fucking indie, basically? And at that point, I just rolled my eyes and made my character say, but you're just a fighter pilot. Why would I directly come to you? Your chain of command, your, your command superior is right there, connected to all of the network when it comes to assigning orders how to deal with a problem. And, well, I'm talking to them, obviously. I'm making a report to your superior. Oh, shit. The shit show. 
the shit show that happened after that was fucking exclusive. And you know what? This is the sort of thing that tends to happen quite often because people somehow mistake an official tag for a sign of um, advanced rank. So obviously, this has gotten so bad that we actually do have a thing called a primary fleet and a secondary fleet. You probably already know this term by now if you've been around in uh, Liberty specifically, for example. But it's a stupid concept. And it's basically silly from the standpoint that you make a character that is flying a Guardian, for example. Okay, you are a naval pilot. You are a skilled individual in terms of piloting a dedicated military spacecraft. So that is a position that you should be fucking proud of. But there is no institution that should be existing, even in something as stupid as it, like, uh, something as unrealistic, rather. Something as unrealistic as a roleplay environment revolving around, you know, space opera, you know, science fantasy, where a expendable, you know, in finger quotes, expendable pilot can talk down to someone, as I mentioned before in the previous video, who is left in charge of millions upon billions worth of military might capability and basically put in charge of this huge fucking ship along with uh, the uh, crew on it and the guns and everything else, right? There's just no reason to do that. And the problem is, the players say, well, how do I do that? Well, then make a battleship. If there is a... I understand this situation. If there is a Liberty Navy official battleship and then there is a, you know, quote, secondary fleet battleship next to it. Yes, okay, I, I, I understand that. One is going to be taking over for the other. But I don't know. This sort of weakness that we display when it comes to the fact that we cannot accept that if we make a small ship, we're just theoretically binding ourselves by default to be under someone's uh, authority, even though we don't want it to be, you know, out of roleplay, you don't want to be under the authority of another player, is fucking silly, because hey, welcome to the roleplay server. Your your roleplay must, is required here. You're supposed to roleplay, and roleplay goes both ways. If you have decided you want to fly a small ship, well then please roleplay the cog that you are in the military. And yes, 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 don't stand up, I know what you're going to say. Oh well, admirals of capital ships also have personal fighters and they should be able to leave at any point in time. No, that's fucking stupid, and I'm gonna tell you why. Imagine you are an admiral, your, your character is an admiral. This, uh, this character has seen years upon years of service to the point where they have the ability, the experience, the charisma to be a fleet admiral. Would you even for a second risk that person's life to put them in a, finger quotes, expendable fighter in the world of Discovery Freelancer, which is fucking dangerous and only second to something like Warhammer 40k? No, that would be fucking stupid. And the reason why we have that is because, hey, guess what? People want to fly fighters, and, well, that's one of the ways you can explain it. Hey, this is my personal fighter ship. But, sorry, that is my hand in canon, and I think that's fucking dumb for the reasons I just described. But, yeah, we need to say that particular um, encounter was kind of silly. From there, just devolved into out of roleplay PMs and accusations of trolling, by the way, which I don't remember it being the case. Obviously, I knew full well that I was addressing a independent player, but I don't think that there, that should be any kind of difference, so to speak. So yeah, that was the one example I really wanted to give you of why I think this is a, such a big problem. This shouldn't be a problem. Like, this shouldn't even be a thing. If you choose to roleplay a character, then you must make your character's design fit the roleplay you want to do. Don't fly a small ship in a Libertonian fleet if you're going to basically assume that your character is hot shit. 
because that's not how it works. That's not how it should work in a roleplay environment. One of the cool things about Discovery Freelancer that I always found was the idea that I can make any character assume any role, from the smallest of grunts to basically what is a fleet admiral, as long as the other players acknowledge it. And that's the thing, it's a two-sided encounter. All roleplay is two-sided. You give and you take. To simply start throwing your weight around like this is not only unprofessional, it simply downright degrades the very reason why official factions exist. And yes, I hear you say, official factions have put in effort into becoming official and they should have some sort of sense of superiority over random independent players playing their characters no matter what kind of ship they fly. And yes, I agree to the point, but the problem is that Yes, the whole faction has put in that effort, but hey, in the most cases, the character that we're talking about, the tagged play player who is basically mouthing off to his in roleplay superior, he got into that faction by writing a single paragraph of introduction text, and so his roleplay is by no means evaluated by anyone to be much greater than the player he's currently trying to fuck around with. But, again, that's my thought on the whole situation. Now, as already said before, if you think that these uh, sort of pet peeves and uh, topics in general are interesting to listen to, well, simply keep up the good work, give it a thumbs up, and I'm going to make more of it. But, yeah, uh, the next video I'm already planning to make is... Uh, I answered some of the questions now, in, in particular... Uh, the ones that asked, well, do you have any specific examples of how players are basically ignoring their roleplay while being on a roleplay server? This is one of the many ones that I have. This is one of the more pet peevish, again, uh, of mine, and the ones that I really remember standing out for quite a few reasons. But, yeah, uh, the next video I'm going to be making about this topic in general is going to be about how to improve your sense of roleplay. If you agree with me that this is an ongoing issue, that we should really reconsider how we look at the roleplay environment in general, and how to deal with some of the um, immersion-breaking problems that we tend to have. Not every person you're going to encounter is going to be giving you the best kind of roleplay, but there are steps that you can take to make every single encounter, regardless of the other player's competence, enjoyable and usable for you in your roleplay, um, you know, system in general. So yeah, guys, uh, this video is going to be much, sm much smarter, much shorter, and I'm going to talk about that particular po topic in the next one. So until then, it's been nice to see you. Let's schedule this little meeting again soon, and I will be taking off.